Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on nitrogen chemistry for the CI, so the chemical industry topic for OCRB salters. So this video is dedicated to OCRB salters, so everything in here is designed around the specification. So if you are studying um, OCR salters course, then this video is perfect for you. So it's not like other generic resources which you may find uh, online and wonder if they're actually relevant to you. These ones are actually dedicated to you and are tailored to salters, like I say. Um, there is a full range of videos from year one all the way through to year two of these types of revision, revision videos. So these are the ones with the black screens. So these are revision videos, but they contain everything you need to know for salters all the way through. So quite comprehensive. And also there's some whiteboard um, tutorial videos as well, um, where I go through general information. So if you're looking for a specific topic, then you can find them there. Um, so because there's a full range of there, um, it's all for free. All I ask um, is that you hit the subscribe button. That would be absolutely fantastic just to show you support and get any updates on new videos. As long as people keep subscribing and watching, then I'll keep making the videos and updating them when new specifications come out. Um, also, these this video is actually made from um, slides, revision slides that I've made, um, and they're available to purchase from a Tez shop. Uh, just click on the link in the description box below. They're great value for money, great for um, revision on the move, so on your smartphone, your tablet, and I've known people to actually print these out as well and use them as their revision notes so they can annotate all of them, draw all of them, etc. So um, click on the link below and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. So like I say, this is dedicated to OCRB salters, so it's specifically for this topic and we are going to be looking at nitrogen chemistry so we're going to be looking at areas such as the different oxides of nitrates uh, we're going to be looking at um, the um, reactions of them so the inter the interrelationship between nitrogen based compounds so we're going to be looking at as well so it's a relatively short topic compared to some of the other videos Okay, so let's start by looking at what the chemistry of nitrogen is first. So nitrogen naturally exists as a diatomic molecule, as you may as you may appreciate. So nitrogen is in group 5 in the periodic table. It has the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So remember your electron configuration is stuff that you would have done in year 1 chemistry. Okay, so this is the configuration of nitrogen. And it sits in group 5, as you can see there. Okay, so that's at the top there. Um, it does exist as diatomics, as you'd probably expect. Um, so it has a triple covalent bond, as you can see. So we've got um, three electrons from each atom has been shared in the middle there. So incredibly strong bond. Um, and that's how it's most commonly, well, that is how it's, fought, how it's found as N2. Um, it's really unreactive. Nitrogen is an inert gas um, at, at room temperature and pressure. So um, it has this... Um, um, possibly useful product actually of nitrogen naturally it makes up most of the atmosphere um it makes up most of the atmosphere as well so you know it's all around us and we know that it's not actually you know it doesn't react with us it doesn't it doesn't um in, you know affect us we breathe it in and we breathe it back out so nitrogen is pretty inert it doesn't actually react with anything and like you say the three pairs of electrons are shared in this triple bond okay so let's have a look at some common nitrogen molecules um so Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia and ammonium ions. Okay, so you, you again, you may be familiar with this from year one chemistry, but the whole point of this is to expand on this and go through it in a little bit more detail. So ammonia has the formula of NH3. It's made through a reaction of N2 and H2, and it's the Haber process, um, the Haber process reaction that you might have seen in the, um, the the previous video in this topic that you need to know about the Haber process. So the Haber process is the synthesis of uh, ammonia, and ammonia is then used as fertilizer in the agricultural industry. So it's it's really useful uh, useful chemical. So ammonia shares three of its valence electrons. Okay, it's valence electrons with hydrogen and there's a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen, which makes it quite useful when it comes into reactions. So it's that lone pair there that um, has um, certain properties. One of them um, is that um, it has a, um, well, it acts as a base, which we'll come into in a moment and get ahead of myself here. Um, but because that lone pair of electrons, ammonia can form hydrogen bonds um, with water and so it's actually really, really soluble. Okay, so that lone pair can interact 
um, on the nitrogen can interact with the hydrogen on another molecule such as water and that makes it soluble um, in addition ammonia can also form date of covalent bonds using one of its uh, using its pair of electrons remember a date of covalent or coordinate bond is where electrons are donated from one atom both electrons are donated from what at one atom to another okay and so this is really useful as ammonia can actually um, form complex uh, complex ions so it can act as a ligand and form a complex ion so you would have seen that in the developing uh, metals topic if you haven't then go and have a look at that uh, at that topic and you'll be able to get a little bit more information on how complexes are actually formed and how ammonia actually behaves as a ligand so Date of covalent or coordinate bonds is, like I say, is where one atom donates two electrons to an atom or an ion to form a bond. So it's different from a standard covalent bond where the electrons are shared. In a coordinate or date of covalent bond, you actually have both electrons coming from one atom, and that's been donated. Date of covalent or coordinate bonds are not as strong as standard covalent bonds. Okay, so. So the lone pair also means uh, ammonia acts as a base, so it's a proton acceptor, um, and it forms the ammonium ion, which is NH4+, when it accepts a proton. So you can see in this diagram here, we're going to do a little bit of animation here. So you can see we've got our ammonia molecule here, which is NH3, and we've got our H plus ion here, which is represented as an acid. So when we add an acid to our base, then we form this coordinate bond there it is okay and so this is date of covalent or coordinate like i say because both electrons are coming from the nitrogen and be donated to the h plus obviously the h plus ion doesn't have any electrons of its own um it's just literally a, a proton so uh, it needs both electrons to come from nitrogen for it to bond now we can actually draw it like this and we use an arrow upwards showing a coordinate or date of covalent bond. Now, the arrow shows the directions of uh, where the electrons are coming from and where they're being donated to. So in this case, they're coming from the nitrogen, as you can see there. So they're coming from the nitrogen to the hydrogen. So that's very important. Like I say, you'll see this um, in the um, developing metals topic as well, um, where we look at um, ligands and coordinate bonds, etc. Okay, so that would be the, the DM topic. Okay. So, so we know what these, um, we know what nitrogen is, uh, and we know an example of a nitrogen molecule, which is ammonia and ammonium, and we'll look at how they interchange later. But other types of nitrogen molecules, or common nitrogen molecules, are oxides of nitrogen, and there's three main ones that you need to know here. Okay, so the first one is NO. That's not no. That's just NO. It's a nitrogen monoxide. It's a funny one, that. Okay, so nitrogen monoxide. Um, it's a colorless gas. It's also known as nitrogen 2 oxide um, because um, your nitrogen, in this case, has a, a plus 2 charge, okay, or is known as nitric oxide, okay, also known as that. The other one is N2O. Now, this is really a funny one. Um, the reason why it's a funny one is this one's known as laughing gas. So if you've ever been to the dentist um, or even had um, an operation and where you might have had anesthetic via gas, so you'll have a mask and you put the anesthetic, the anesthetic comes through as a gas. Mainly in the dentist, I think they use this a lot. Um, so this is uh, this is called uh, nitrogen uh, dinitrogen monoxide, so N2O. It's got this nice sweet smell, and it, the reason why it's called laughing gas is it makes you it actually makes people feel a bit kind of a bit jolly um, when they breathe this in. So um, it is used in anesthesia. Um, this this type of gas here, so laughing gas. Okay. Um, obviously, it's got to be it's a it's got to be controlled as a as a gas. You you know, although we say it's a laughing gas, it is a chemical. It is an anesthetic, and it can render you unconscious. And it does have obviously effects if you breathe too much, and so that's why it's got to be monitored and controlled by ex experts, which are um, uh, anaesthetists, which will then regulate the amount of gas because it can. You know, you don't want too much of this in your blood, otherwise it could it could make you seriously ill, of course. But the last one um, that you need to know is nitrogen dioxide. This is very, very different. It's amazing how we just change. We add two oxygens and remove a nitrogen, and we get a very different gas. This one is toxic. It is horrendously toxic. You should never breathe this in. It's a brown gas. It's got a very sharp, sharp smell, um, also known as uh, nitrogen-4 oxide, um, nitrogen dioxide there. So you've got to be able to 
distinguish between NO, N2O, and NO2. Okay, so they're all types of nitrogen, common nitrogen molecules, and you need to be able to distinguish between each of them and give a use for them if there is a use, but also um, being able to distinguish them as well. You know, what do they, what distinguishes these three? Okay, but we'll we'll look at how these actually all interchange with ammonia, ammonium, uh, nitrogen, and all these oxides. We'll look, you need to know how they all kind of feed together as well, but that's um, towards the end of the video. Okay, so let's look at how we test for some of these ions. So test for ammonium compounds um, and for hydroxides, we use litmus paper, okay? So let's have a look at testing for, obviously we're gonna just mainly be looking at ammonium compounds here um, because ammonia is obviously related to, um, uh, related to the nitrogen topic, but you can do the same with hydroxides for this as well. Um, but basically, we add sodium hydroxide to our sample that we want to test. We gently heat it, and if ammonium compound is present, then what we'd get is ammonia gas starts to come off, and you get that ammonia gas has got a really pungent, strong smell. Okay, um, so we use damp, um, damp red litmus, and ammonia will actually because it's it's a base, it will actually. Um, uh, the ammonia will dissolve in the water and it will actually turn that litmus blue uh, because um, ammonia is, is slightly basic. So really important test, but we can also do that with hydroxides as well, just for additional information because um, hydroxides like ammonia are bases. Okay, but we're really only looking at um, obviously ammonium compounds here. Okay, so how do we test? So we know how to test for ammonium compounds. So how do we test for nitrate? So nitrate five ions. So nitrate ions, so this is an ion that's a light effect. We've got an oxygen on there. So test for nitrate ions, nitrate five ions, NO3 minus. We're using, um, so using sodium hydroxide and aluminium to actually test for these ions. So let's have a look. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our um, sample, whatever we want to test, into a test tube. Um, and we're gonna add sodium hydroxide to this sample and we're going to add aluminium foil or we can um, we can actually add Devada's alloy which is basically just an alloy that contains aluminium so aluminium is the key thing here um, and then we warm it up under a test tube as you can see there so we just gently heat that up and then if nitrate ions are present they will be reduced by the aluminium that's present in the in the sample here so it's just a solid um, to ammonia gas so we get NH3 that's actually produced here similar to what we'd seen before and so the overall reaction goes a little bit like this. So we have our nitrate ions here, plus our aluminium with our hydroxide ions that we've added in there. And obviously it's all aqueous, so we've got 18 lots of water in there as well. And we're gonna produce ammonia, and we produce this aluminium hydroxide is produced at the end here, okay? So make sure you are familiar with this reaction, okay? Producing aluminium hydroxide, ALOH4 minus, okay, this complex here plus ammonia, that's the key thing what's produced here. Now, just like with the previous one, um, we test for ammonia by just putting some um, red litmus at the mouth of the boiling tube, um, and it will turn blue if ammonia is present because ammonia is a basic compound, so therefore it will to make it turn blue. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the last bit, um, and this is what I was saying about um, interchanging the different um, nitrogen molecules and and as long you need to know the equations for these the half equations and um, you are expected to balance half equations so um, they have done videos on this and well, you will have done this in year one about how to balance a half equation and how to add electrons and protons and water etc so this step here is going to show how these nitrogens can be into how they're intertwined with each other and how we actually uh, you know how they kind of link in with nitrogen itself because this video is obviously on nitrogen chemistry. So we can see we've got various different types if we've seen already, okay? So we've got nitrate five ions, NO3 minus. We've got nitrate three ions, NO2 minus. We've got ammonium ions, ammonia, nitrogen gas on its own, and we've got obviously the nitrogen oxides as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one and we're gonna see what the reactions are. So the first one is nitrogen gas, which is N2 to ammonia. So this is the reaction that you need to know. So you just need to know the reaction um, and how to actually do that. So we react it with hydrogen to form ammonia. So this is the Haber process, remember? Okay, and so what about ammonia going to ammonia mines? 
Well, you remember from previously that all we have to do is add an acid to that. So we add H plus to form ammonium ions. And then if we go to ammonium ions to nitrate ions, so nitrate three ions. Well, the overall reaction here is we take our ammonium and we react it with oxygen. Okay, and we form our nitrate ions there. And this is what I mean, you can balance it out using protons and electrons as well. So this is how we know it. Obviously, you'll have to balance this out. Um, you know, you'll have to have the um, ability to balance this and you should be able to do this. This is a, a separate skill here, okay? So we're forming nitrate ions, which is NO2 minus. Okay, so what about nitrate three ions to nitrate five ions? So what we do here is we taking the NO2 minus, we're adding water to it, um, and then we're forming NO3 minus ions. So um, that's the reaction there to form nitrate five ions. And then what about nitrate five ions to nitrogen gas? Well, what we're doing here is we're going to take our nitrate five ions, react it with some acid. Okay, so we're going to um, heat this up. This will this will all be done under reflux, and we produce nitrogen gas is produced here. And the final step is nitrogen gas going to your nitrogen oxides. Well, this is fairly straightforward. All we're doing is adding reacting nitrogen with oxygen, and that will form your nitrate. So, for example, this is how you form nitrogen monoxide. Um, another example, this is how you form um, nitrogen dioxide. So we're just reacting it with oxygen again, but just different ratios. And then finally, um, we then to form your um, dinitrogen oxide, you um, use the same reaction. So we're just doing it in different ratios, but you need to know how all of them are interlinked and you need to know the, the reactions for these as well. It's really, really important, okay? Okay, so that's it. So that's everything that you need to know for nitrogen chemistry. So it's a fairly um, a fairly short video. And um, like I say, there's a full range of videos on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel, um, year one and year two chemistry, exactly dedicated specifically to uh, salters, OCRB salters. So go and have a look on there. There's whiteboard tutorials as well, which go through general information. It's all for free. All I ask is you hit the subscribe button. That'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, also, um, these slides, like I say, they can be purchased. Great value for money. Just click on the link below and you can get your own copy of them there. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.